Hello? Oh, it works. Okay. Hi, my name is Heather Grafe, and I will be the host for this afternoon's session. This is room K1, or I think it's called the Temple. And um, the breakout session for this hour is titled The Impact of Christian Media in Global Crisis Zones. Um, before I introduce our presenter, I need to tell you all that the session is being live streamed to six satellite sites in Ontario, Manitoba, and North Dakota. And it's also available to everyone who's registered and downloaded the Mission Fest app. So please know that your image may appear on a live stream broadcast. And if you don't absorb all the content in our session, or if you'd like to see any of the other ones that you've missed, the video of each session will be available after Mission Fest is over on our YouTube channel. So, our presenter today is Shoaib, is that right? Okay, Ebadi, and some of you have heard him speak already. He's been the executive director of Square One World Media in Winnipeg since 2016. Brother Ebadi was born in Kabul, Afghanistan, and after a, uh, pursuing degrees in law and accounting, he worked for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Uzbekistan. He immigrated to Canada in 2000, and he has partnered with Voice of the Martyrs in the US to work with persecuted Afghan Christians. As an Afghan Christian, he has spoken about the plight of Afghan believers in many countries. He's been instrumental in establishing the Chai Immigrant Center, that stands for Christians Helping All Immigrants, in 2007 to help refugees and other newcomers settle in Canada. So please give him a warm Manitoba welcome as he comes to present. I think it's on. Yes, yes. I would like to introduce to you uh, Emily uh, Weeb. Emily is a manager of development in a Square One World Media. Come up, Emily. And uh, uh, she has on our table a Square One. Some of you might uh, met her. Uh, you want to say a couple words where they can uh, come? Up? Yeah, absolutely. So our booth is set up just basically right across the way. Once you pass the info center, we're right on the other side. Um, so you can come and see me. I'll be there the rest of the weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm the new manager of development as of July uh, 2021. Um, and something I've been amazed to see with Square One since I've started is basically just how much media comes out of such a small studio in, here in Winnipeg. Um, we're just located in Elmwood. And last year alone, we we created almost 500 episodes of different types of media. So that's more than one episode a day from a very small staff, from a very small studio that's going all over the world. Um, so that has been very exciting for me since I started. Um, and yeah, I hope I see you over there at the booth. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. It's good to see you, Harold. Harold, uh, we kind of, when we came to Canada in 2000, we uh, went to Prairie Bible College, Three Hills, Alberta, and Harold and his wife Lillian, they were the first couple like, that helped us there in that Three Hills small town. And uh, great to see you, Harold. Uh, God bless you, and you're a great family. Uh, he w uh, works with the translation of the Bible with Wycliffe, and we thank God for you, Harold and Lillian. I met your uh, Lillian as well, Sister Lillian. Okay, guys, uh, how many of you are in the main session? All of you? Oh, okay. Ah, now it's, uh, it's difficult now to... How? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you... What? It was okay? That's... Anyway? Okay. Sorry? That's right, yes. Yes. Yeah, there are something, you know, uh, nowadays that uh, something called, you know, we are familiar with the fake news, yeah? There are a lot of fake news around the world. But what we do in a Square One World Media, we give the gospel, the news about gospel. And thank you. Thank you, Arlie and Janice. They're another great friends here. We are friends with Arlie and Janice, our family friends as well for last, how many, 23 years kind of, or more. This uh, uh, time, we're going to talk about impact of Christian media. Let's say... 
What are the more hot crisis places in the world now? Ukraine. Yes? Russia. Then? Middle East. Middle East, I mean Arab world, and also Middle East, I mean Iran, Afghanistan, with the terrorism, with the Taliban. Another one that our Americans friends very interested is in South Central America, from migration, there's a lot of violence there. Another one that also part of South America is the low German communities. I, in Paraguay and Bolivia, I visited them. You know, in my life, uh, I, I saw, you know, I, I was growing up in the violence and war. It's, I'm a kind of an age that I don't get surprised easily. And uh, also, I, didn't, I don't get shocked easily. But then when I was visited Bolivia, when these low German communities, colonies, I was shocked. Because they live probably in the 1400s. No cell phones, no, no nothing. I can share with you uh, more. And uh, this is what we uh, do in Square One World Media. It started 75 years ago by two students from uh, Manitoba Bible College, Mennonite Brethren Bible College, two Henrys, Henry Brooks and Henry Putker. And uh, they started the first half an hour, uh, Gospel Light Hour. And uh, what we do basically, how can Christian use media to positive impact places around the globe facing devastation and war? In that time, these were emailed 75 years ago. These two students started something for their neighbors, for uh, Mennonites, to share the gospel here in Winnipeg. But Square One World Media uses culturally relevant for the last 75 years from one city one language, we are now preaching the gospel in seven languages in different parts of the world. Where crises are, as I mentioned, Ukraine, Russia, Central America, and Central and South America, the Middle East, and uh, 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 Iran, Afghanistan. Square One World Media uses culturally relevant television, radio, streaming services, and print media to share the good news of Jesus Christ with nations around the world. And what we say relevant the, what culturally relevant, it means that we do not dictate our producers what to produce. They know, for example, Ernesto Pinto, he, was, he grew up in Honduras. He knows the language, he knows the culture. Then he comes up with the content, and we help him. We encourage him, we give him the tool. Or our low German, in, low, in uh, Paraguay, in Bolivia, we have two teams. We do not tell them what to do, but they know the language, they know the context, they know the culture. This is very important. This is the, one of the uniqueness of Square One World Media, that uh, we do this. And this includes hotspots such as Ukraine, Afghanistan, Central America, Russia, and the Middle East. Session participation will learn how media can be used to bring the gospel of, to places where feet cannot go and bring hope to a hurting world. When I visited Ukraine, uh, how many, uh, 2017, uh, five years ago, when I, when I met with the different uh, missions there, and including our partners, I, I said one thing. I said, now Ukraine is open to the gospel. Preach it. As much as you can. Because you never know what tomorrow will happen. You know why? Why the people of Ukraine now they are standing in this hardship because of the gospel, because of the faith that they have. I talk with them. I talk with the people like in a weekly basis with our partners. Like this young guy, 20 years old, just married last year. He traveled 18,000 kilometers for one week. He has a van and he put uh, medication and clothes in the van and he travels to the eastern Ukraine to bring medication and clothing and all food to people who were close to uh, the war. And then from that side back, he brings children and disabled people. 18, many times he was under attack. What keeps him? Faith in the Lord Jesus. And that's why we say in the 
places where the crises are. And gospel helps them. Russia, Middle East. Session, you will learn that. Next slide, please. The most important thing is that if you come to our uh, project manager, Grant Hipner, if you say, hey, I have this idea about this media ministry or media project, you know, the first question you ask is, who is your audience? Who is your audience? If you say that my audience are all Canadians, forget about it. You don't get anywhere with Grant. If you say, if your audience is very broad, you see, do not make your audience too broad. Focus on a specific audience. So uh, focus on a specific audience. For example, uh, what I usually say, it's a, a laser focus. We all know this laser that has the kids that they play, laser. What, what the laser is, that it brings light to a lot of our surrounding, but focuses in one place. And this is what the best way is, when you choose your audience, focus in one. It can be, even if it's a, let's say a woman, it's too broad. Men, too broad. Youth, it, it has to be in a very, the, the more focused your audience is, the more effective is your media. Be, uh, go back please, be authentic with your audience. That's, that's the key. We don't kind of, from West, because you know, the thing is from West, here is, everything is good, yeah. I came from a war torn country. I basically live in two very reality. One reality is here in the West, everything is good. I have food, I have my family, I, I have cars. But also another reality is Afghanistan, where people, they do not have food, they're dying. They're, and these two realities. I do not, when I am beside the TV program, I do not be fake there. Sometimes people, uh, uh, for example, to our TV show, they ask what I should do. Should I leave Afghanistan or should I stay? I don't know exactly. I have to be honest. I do not because I am not in their shoes. If I tell them to stay, I might make a mistake. I, I tell them to leave. It's also not good. And the best way is to be honest. Really, I don't know. Ask the Lord. We usually say, ask the Lord. Ask others there. But make a wise choice. We have to be authentic with our uh, audience. Next, please. And the, another thing is content is very important. What content you use for your media? What content we use? In our own, like uh, uh, for the, uh, the Afghan TV program that we have, Arli and I, he is the director of Afghan TV program uh, from OM, and we constantly talk about content. We constantly talk about content. How we can uh, make our content the best way for Afghan people. The, the thing is, uh, you know, we, those of us who, uh, the, those of you who are raised in the Western uh, countries, these words like grace, love, they are very understandable words for you. I was uh, attending a, um, a leader impact course, and it called uh, Bursting Your Bubbles called Bursting Your Bubbles. And this course, basically, on the first day, they say, uh, you have to share your testimony for three minutes without using any big words, like forgiveness, like grace, like love, without using this. Probably for you, it would be impossible. But for me, it's easy. Because I don't have that. thing, And this is why when we Content is very important. We, when we talk to that specific group of people, it doesn't matter. Afghanistan, Honduras, Ukraine, Russia, Canada. We have to know the context. What they are going through. What is there. And be honest as much as we can. And then creative. Again, we always like, look, this year uh, we are spending, score one world me, we are spending almost $100,000 to buy new equipment. Why? Because people, they watch nowadays uh, on YouTube, you watch something that it is creative. 
I, I, basically, even I, I myself, I don't watch any clip if it's, uh, first of all, more than two minutes. Yeah, people, they don't have time now. You have to be very creative. You have to be, uh, the, and creativity, it means new things. And we always try to uh, work on creativity. And thank God, Grant Hepner, the manager, uh, production manager, he is always looking for that as well. And, and that's a good thing. He look not only, he looks critically, critically. And creativity is very important. And technical. We uh, use, you, you see that uh, new technology, and we all about the lights. Lights is very expensive. Lights is very expensive. And uh, uh, one of the things that we are good as Core One, we say we are good, we have a good studios, a, a great place, and can other Christian, can we help other Christian organizations? And because we are good at that, and we want to do that. Uh, next, please. Uh, here, uh, the, this message you present to your audience is the most important thing. Your message must be drive all decision in the production process. This is an Instagram video from that uh, young man from Ukraine. He records two minutes uh, radio. When we started this program, I asked him, okay, who is your audience? Uh, he said, my audience is younger generation. And I said, okay, what language in Ukraine? There is a Ukrainian language, and also most of the people, they know Russian language. And youth in Russia also, learn. we said, can we do this in Russian language? Ukrainian can watch it, and Russian can watch it. And he does this two minutes in Russian uh, language. And it, he uses very fast uh, space. It's a genuine. Can we go uh, next? Let's play one of his uh, video clips. Благодать. Необъятная, как океан, пронзает небеса, наполняет сердце и душу, приносит чувство целостности, напоминает мне, почему я жив и обо всем, что ты для меня сделал. Благодать, необъяснимая, непостижимая разумом, воспринятая сердцем. Она открывает глаза, помогает видеть, открывает уши, чтобы слышать, понять, что мои губы предназначены для гораздо большего, чем просто поцелую. Благодать. Мы были созданы, чтобы жить. И когда я говорю жить, я имею в виду любить. Но как я могу жить, если я не способен любить? И как я могу любить, если я не научился отдавать? Благодать. Откуда у меня это чувство ненасытности и постоянное желание большего. Почему я так беспокоюсь о неспасенных душах? Почему моя душа болит от мысли просто жить для себя? Для чего были созданы эти руки, если не кормить голодных, и ноги, если не делиться Евангелием с неспасенными? Может быть, пришло время сосредоточиться на жизни, а не на выживании? Понять, что счастье больше похоже на доверие, а не на старание? Возможно, пришло время осознать, что у меня нет ответов на все вопросы, признать, что я пылинка на холмистом берегу вселенского существования, согласиться, что в 100% ошибок, которые я совершил, полностью моя вина. Благодарю. Зачем возлагать надежду на всемогущего Бога, если я пытаюсь все решить и сделать сам? Я понял, что достигаю большего только тогда, когда я просто все отпускаю и позволяю ему быть во главе. Благодать. Она говорит о том, что Бог смотрит на меня, как на своего ребенка. Она о том, что Бог не смотрит на того, кем я был. Что Бог на самом деле простил все мои грехи и ошибки. Что Он действительно смотрит на сердце. Возможно, Он вел меня с самого начала. Возможно, все идет по плану, и хотя картина еще не дорисована, Бог все же использует меня, помогает мне стать лучше и быть ответом для других. Может быть, пришло время перестать сомневаться и начать действовать. Благодать, надежда и спасение действительно даны нам бесплатно. He has a, around 17,000 Instagram followers. And one of his uh, followers, a, a young girl, asked him questions and all it happens that they live close by. And he helped that girl and uh, that girl became his wife. You see, ministry can help you. There is a single here that, yeah, here is, you go. Use media, and then you, you can have your uh, godly man and woman. Uh, can we move on? Here is another one, 180 grados. It's a Spanish TV based on uh, uh, testimonies. Basically, our group now, Ernesto, Marina, and Grant, and Eli, they, are in, uh, they were in Argentina. They will uh, go now to Paraguay to uh, interview. And those interviews are going to be 180 grados. Can we go next one? Usted está disfrutando de 180 grados, televisión para el corazón. Yo soy su amigo Ernesto Pinto y en esta oportunidad conversaré con una hija que me dice que el vacío que llevaba en su corazón fue producto del abandono de su padre. Sé que su historia nos hará reflexionar. Como he insistido, la miseria, las heridas, el dolor comienza en nuestra casa. 
si yo como padre abandono a mis hijos, estoy produciendo dolor y pobreza. Antes de conversar con Cristel, le voy a agradecer a usted que me visite en el internet y me reporte esta audición. Esta entrevista fue hecha al aire libre y le aseguro que hacía un calor insoportable en la ciudad de Villahermosa, Tabasco. Ahora sí, vamos a la conversación con nuestra invitada de hoy. Cristel, bienvenida y por favor comienza contándonos algo acerca de ti. Pues yo crecí en una familia desintegrada. A los seis años mi padre nos abandonó. Este... Cuando tú tenías seis años, tu padre se fue de la casa. Ajá, sí. ¿Y recuerdas ese momento? No, porque estaba no. muy pequeña. Entonces, mm. no, no tenías conciencia de ese momento. Ajá, no. ¿Cómo no. te diste cuenta que tu papá se fue? Eh, porque, pues, mamá se iba a trabajar, entonces nos dejaba encargados con mi hermano. Mm. Y, pues, empecé a crecer y necesitaba como que el calor de mamá porque prácticamente estábamos solos o sea, papá se va mamá tiene que refugiarse en el trabajo tiene que trabajar para mantenerles entonces perdiste a tu papá y perdés a tu mamá también así es ajá, ajá. entonces prácticamente quedamos al cuidado de mi hermano mayor uh -huh. eh, empecé a crecer digamos que con un cierto rechazo falta de amor when i came to square one I ask Ernesto, what is the number one problem in Central South America? And his answer was, abundant children. That the men, they live with a woman and then they leave. They, the woman, they make uh, children, children are born and the man leaves the house and they are orphans all over. And this is what we focus. And hundreds, uh, hundreds of uh, children he also helps those orphans as well okay and here is uh, another one uh, about the russia uh, children program in uh, russia entertainment is not a bad thing that's uh, you know it's in the uh, the mennonite background i don't know how they see entertainment but entertainment is not a bad thing An uh, effective entertainment is compelling content that is creatively designed to keep an audience attention long enough to get a message across. Creative media design involves many elements to help to move the audience along with production. Productions continued and brings the audience to a place of understanding. Creativity supports the message, but must not distract from it. Often, less is more. Reducing distraction is a significant part of creativity. It's interesting that uh, I think less is more is very important. Less is more is very important. How we can do less, but with high quality, with good content, with creativity. Can we move on? Here is one of the Ella's backyard. It's a puppet show. Let's watch it. Привет всем, кто любит смотреть на звезды. Можешь ли ты их сосчитать? Если перечислять их по одной в секунду, тебе понадобится две с половиной тысячи лет. И это только в галактике Млечный Путь. А в нашей обозримой вселенной два триллиона галактик. К тому же, каждую секунду во вселенной появляется пять тысяч новых звезд. Пять тысяч каждую секунду. Бог не просто знает, сколько звезд нашей вселенной, но каждую называет по имени. Как он только успевает придумывать им имена. И все эти звезды гигантских размеров. По ссылке в описании смотри видео, где сравниваются размеры планет и звезд. И не забудь включить русские субтитры. В Библии написано, что небеса провозглашают величие Божие, и звезды говорят о Творце. Получается, эти звезды как огромный светящийся рекламный экран, который виден каждому человеку и каждую ночь напоминает. У Вселенной есть Создатель. И этот Бог который больше, чем ты можешь себе представить, хочет строить взаимоотношения с тобой.
you know, in Russia for more than 70 years, the government, the communists, and atheism, they want to take uh, children out of God, away from God, from God's word. And what we do, we bring them back. Let the children come to me, Jesus says. And in a creative way. Our, the viewers, it's a, we have a 3 million viewers now in our YouTube channel. Mostly from U, uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. And when the war started, we thought that our uh, viewers will go down. But our viewers, specifically from Ukraine, went up three times. Because children now, they are taking refuge in subways and in the basements. And they don't have, and they have a cell phone, they watch Ella's backyard. They can at least, if for a couple minutes, they can have hope from the Lord. And that's helping them. Move on. Uh, this is another one that we did for many years, Micah Superblock. Can we play there? Mailbag. Dear Micah, what's your favorite verse? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know. Right now, my favorite verse would have to be Luke 9, verse 25. What good is it if someone gains the whole world, but loses or gives up their very self? Now, I don't know if you know this, but at school, I'm not very popular. You got that right. You have what is called a dream. See what I mean? And you don't have the very latest in fashion clothes like me. Okay, okay. We get the point. When I read this verse, it helps remember being popular isn't what's important. What do you mean? Being popular is everything! Do I have to remind you how much mail I have? What I mean is, when we focus only on fame and popularity, we can forget that our relationship with God is the most important thing of all. Well, you do that, and I'll focus on all of my mail from my adoring Hans Fans! Just don't huh? choke on the envelope huh? again. Huh? Huh? I've got so huh? much huh? mail! <laughs> <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Um... I think it's time to see some fan art. So beautiful. Oh, the color is so vibrant. I love me. Oh, look at this. Oh, they got the hair so good. Yeah, this is an English program now. This uh, Micah Super Vlog is, is streaming to many streaming services, including uh, the uh, uh, Minnow. It's a Christian. Uh, children's service or uh, jelly telly that in the past uh, that's great impact has on North American also it, uh, in UK uh, are streaming and even South America are streaming this Micah Superblog has a great impact uh, this uh, uh, production progress technical uh, uh, techni technicalities are vital to all media communications and how we program Every second and all our, we have a storyboard for all these media that you said it's one minute or two minutes or an hour, we have a storyboard. That second, minute by minute, there are uh, written what we should do. Who has a responsibility? Technicality. Technicalities support creative and content. Technicalities must always be aware of the message and not distract from the message. Technicalities must enhance creative while at the same time remaining invisible. Technicalities should not be abused as a crutch. We will just fix it in post. Technicality should not be used as an excuse. The technical limitation can be overcome with creativity. We all have, you know, we have a live show on Fridays. Sometimes even the producers, these people that they work years, they make a mistake. But the show is going on. The show is going on. We say, we acknowledge our mistakes, we learn from our mistakes, but the, the process, we have to follow the uh, process. Each Friday morning, like our uh, producers connect with Slovenia, then connect for a TV show for Afghanistan, connects with satellites. And the time that we, I speak on Friday morning, at seven seconds later, it can be heard and seen in Afghanistan. Could you imagine? It goes through uh, the Winnipeg to New York to Slovenia to the Middle East in seven seconds. That's technology. We thank God for that, and we're going to use it. And uh, uh, here are some pictures behind the scene. Uh, move In on. Winnipeg, we started the production of uh, our new series, uh, Alice Beckert Vlog.
In order to start the production, we had to build two sets. Uh, one was uh, Ella's room. set is uh, the green set. Uh, right now we are using more and more of this uh, green set technology, cutting Ella or the other puppets uh, out and putting them in any kind of places we want. There are a lot of details, but one thing that last, uh, when COVID hit, yeah, I, I, in that time, you know, a lot of leaders, churches, we prayed to the Lord what we should do what we should do. And I was praying that because some churches, they laid off uh, some uh, colleagues and some ministries even. And I said, Lord, what do you wanted us to do? And I think Lord was clear. And he said, trust in me. And we trusted in him. We did not cut any hours from our colleagues Actually, we increased hours and we increased production in the last two years. That's how God works. It's not by our own, but it's by His grace and faithfulness. And we thank God for that. The uh, process is very content. We create contents, then creative, it goes to production manager. We have a director in each uh, project. Then technical, all three process area overlap and work with each other in production and productive ways. And w one of the things that I um, always uh, talk with my team uh, is that uh, I wish the Lord Jesus, when he gave uh, on that uh, uh, sermon on the mount, uh, the, uh, on the mount, uh, he should, uh, I'm thinking, add one I think blessed are those who are flexible. But he is not. But we can be flexible. One of the things that in production process is very important is flexibility. How we can, how we can be patient and accept the differences and listen to one another. Listen one to another. And one of the things, we had one uh, great man of God, but he could work, you know, some thing, terms lone ranger kind of. He, he, is, he was great, but he wanted to work alone. It flourished, but not much. In one of all these teams, why they are flourishing? Because it's a teamwork. We are now working with another local uh, creative person, Jordan, about uh, cottonwood trails, about children in camps. And our team, we met together, and they say, wow, this guy, he's a creative, but still he listens to others. You know, sometimes those of us who are creative, we might say, oh, this is my way. I want it this way. But it's very important to work in a team. Here are some f truth. Quantity is not equal to production complexity. Quantity is not equal to production quality. You can make one program and can take hundreds of hours. But the most important is to have a good quality. Quantity is not equal to production cost. Quantity is not equal to audience impact. Quantity is not equal to mission complete. You know, a lot of time in North America, it's how many you produce, yeah? How many, how many, how many? But it's not in the media world, not like that. In the media world is the content and quality. We can produce, like, for one minute of that uh, Mica Superblock, one minute to produce one minute Mica Superblock, it is a it is a, a, more than 10,000. It's not an easy thing. And this is why, the, these are the truth. And this is our dairy, uh, the, the, our TV program, is there is a video there. The situation in Afghanistan is getting worse. Winter is around the corner. And 18 million Afghans do not have enough food. The majority of women are not allowed to go to work 
and girls from grade 6 to 12 cannot attend school. Through our TV program, we share the light, hope, and love of Jesus Christ to Afghans in these dark days. We received this email a couple of days ago. An Afghan who seeks the Lord writes, May the light of the Lord shine on you. I watch your show. If people will know about my connection with you, I might be killed. I wanted to follow the light and become like you. Please help me. Millions of Afghans like him are seeking the light, seeking Jesus. Please pray for Afghans. Thank you for your continued support and prayers. Uh, Afghanistan is in our heart, in my heart, uh, and what we do is we say uh, the program that we designed, I shared earlier that there is no visible church in Afghanistan. There is no visible church. There are, are believers who are meeting in different places, in different provinces. What we do with our one-hour show, we give them a glimpse of church. It's not a church. It's a glimpse of church that they can learn the Bible, they can listen to some worship songs, they can pray. I give a high-impact story about things that are happening in Afghanistan, and also I receive live calls. Like we have a, uh, Farhad, one of our friends, that he uh, arranged the calls, but when people on call, there is no monitor. I don't know what they're going to say. They can say whatever they want. Sometimes they say, why you are not preaching from Quran? And I say, what you are talking about? This is a Christian program. Or sometimes they give their life to the Lord. Or sometimes they uh, talk. They want to give their testimony. Sometimes they argue. Sometimes they uh, question. Valid questions. And we do it. And we also, our follow-up team, call them back. Some of them, they get like, there is a couple of stages. When they call, then it's a screen and a person called them back. Then uh, there is another group that they can move them to a uh, more focused uh, work that they can share with them about Bible study or other things. And these are very crucial. And these days in Afghanistan, the opportunities are wide, but we have to focus. We have to uh, focus. And we thank God for uh, Ministry of Square One. Uh, now I will give you a little bit of time if you have any questions, please. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I, I, yes. Uh, I think in this time, actually, there is no uh, government in Afghanistan. There is no functioning. Taliban took power, but there is not functioning government that can function as a government. But you never know in the future what will happen. But uh, for now, actually, I, I, I am surprised that, uh, only correct me if I'm wrong, that I was receiving... Uh, threats when the NATO and Americans were there than the Taliban for last year. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a surprise me as well. But what I'm saying is that, first of all, the numbers that we give phone numbers, it's American phone numbers. They, they cannot find. But what I'm thinking, okay, if a person want to find me from Afghanistan, and they can easily do that. But to harm me, it is a, it's, I think there is a possibility that I will hit by a car here in Winnipeg. It's more than a person will be directed from Taliban to kill me. I think that's what I would say for now. But you never know what will happen next. Thank you. Yes.
like oh yeah 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 yes yes they uh, they do uh, take out our some uh, stuff but you know they're always uh, with uh, kind of a way as well to change the wording uh, like w what i mean is in description what, yes exactly how we don't, here is the thing that uh, two, uh, two things one that we preach the gospel christ crucified we are not hiding this not in any of our output we are not hiding that we are preaching the gospel but in terms of how to work with the different media outlet then we its creativity comes that how we can even in russia russia is a, is a very difficult uh, place now but uh, so far uh, we are uh, continuous our program in russia continues youtube is continuous and uh, although like we had a like our partners in russia they were in moscow we brought them from moscow and the account for youtube was in Mo uh, created in moscow and we were operating through that account and when we were with that promotions and these sanctions happened yeah last month then actually our money froze there froze there but what we did we created another account here from winnipeg and we can do it yeah a uh, little bit of money we uh, it's frozen but i hope that we can get it back but in the same time we created we uh, yes you have to there is a way to find a new creative way or change the description in a way uh, not compromising the message yeah we we do not uh, compromise the message uh, the message is there but uh, we find it different ways thank you Uh, in Russia, only in Russia. Uh, so far in Canada, no. Uh, in Ukraine, no. In Central South America, no. Uh, in uh, in Iran, yes. In Iran, like we had a uh, one of the things was like we had a phone number, and after a while, uh, like uh, we we knew that uh, the average of calls that we uh, uh, get, and we didn't get called, and then. Our uh, colleagues, they called that number and they saw that it was, that number was silent by the government of Iran. And then we quickly, we changed the number. Any other question? Yes. Uh, yes, what, what we do is, uh, there is at scoreoneworldmedia.com it is usually to give you a snapshot of our project. But if you want to download our, uh, like the media output, then we have a separate website for each. For example, for Spanish, we have encuentro.ca. For example, for uh, low German, we have a lowgermanmedia.com. For example, for Russia, we have lsbackyard.com. For Ukraine is the same. For Afghanistan, we have hope for Afghans.com. Yeah, like uh, people can go there and uh, download, watch, or whatever they want. Yeah, those are separate websites that managed by different uh, people, sometimes organizations. I think it's a smart way. Do you agree? Even in Ukraine, where the uh, gospel is uh, uh, open, but it's still, uh, we got a lot of uh, times that uh, our uh, program was censored by the government of Ukraine. But somehow our partners, they find a way to bring it back. Yes, sir. Yeah, as, as you know, that uh, Russian, uh, traditionally Russian church is orthodox, which is orthodox is supportive of Putin. But the, there are a lot of Pentecostal, Baptist, and Evangelical Christians, and they are uh, against this war.
they are against. And they are like we had a, uh, a friend that uh, he spoke in a church and that, uh, that uh, uh, against the war in Moscow. And then just the next day, the KGB came after him. And they were investigating him. And thank God that he left Moscow. And yeah, they, there are and a lot of, uh, uh, also, a lot of people from Russia, they are leaving now in different ways, specifically from Moscow. And uh, there are churches are closing, and there are some pastors, they are um, uh, arrested. Any other question or comment or? Yes, uh, yeah, what we do is, if you have a, some kind of, a, what I, we say vision, yeah? If you have a vision or envisioning something, then you come to me, and Grant and I, we will talk with you. We will meet with you, and we will ask the same question that we give there. And we want to hear you, and then we can have another, like currently, uh, this, this year we will start two more um, uh, programs, and one of them is Cottonwood Trail. Uh, this is what we met, Grant and I, we met with uh, Jordan, who is a local creative person, and then we went through this, and what we usually do when we agree with you in partnership, then we will plan for a pilot episode. A pilot episode, whatever it is, we want to see how much it costs for us, what is, and also what, what is distribution, and when we do the pilot, project, for example, we did with the Ibrahim about the School of Leadership in Arabic. We did with him a pilot project, and last year we did 20 of them, and now they are broadcasting to different uh, streaming services in Arabic world. Uh, it's a, uh, two, three steps that we want to make sure uh, that uh, basically when you start something new, we don't want you to fail. We do a due diligence that you have a success for the kingdom. What I say to my colleagues that we all, first of all, we are kingdom workers. We are kingdom workers first, and then Square One World Media staff. And that's, thank God. And we have, I have a, all my, almost 80% of my staff, that uh, specifically those who work in the admin, they work partially in admin and partially in a creative way. And we thank God for that. They can flourish their talents and at the same time do some time boring job too. <laughs> Not all my job exciting, but I have to do some of this. Everything. Yes. What? Uh, yeah. Like uh, historically, uh, as you see, uh, Square One was a part of Mennonite Brethren communication, part of Mennonite Brethren denomination. But since 2001, it became independent. But it's still Mennonite Brethren churches and Mennonite Brethren donors, all the bulk of our uh, uh, donations. But uh, for the last 10 years, other denominations also came on board. Uh, churches and individuals, they are uh, giving uh, to us. Yeah, we are a charity, independent uh, charity, and we are welcome churches and individuals uh, to come. What uh, for us the most important is that it's not the amount of donation. I, I give you a story. One lady gave $12 to our uh, uh, the Square One World Media, and she asked us to divide this $12 in $2 for six projects. You laugh, yes? You know what I do? I thank God. Why? Because she gave for 30 years. And she gave $12, but she prays. You don't imagine how much I go to churches and people like John, like others, with these a lot of experience and uh, white hair, and they come to me and they say, we pray for you every day. And that's the matter the most. That's where it keeps us going. 
and keeps us going and keep, kept us for the last 75 years. And we're going to go further. Thank God. Any other question or anything? Yes? There are uh, different ways. Uh, like if it's a YouTube, you can monitor it how many views are. As I mentioned, like Ella's Backyard watched by more than 3 million people. Or for example, our low German uh, programs are watched. Some of them, they are watched 70,000. It's a lot. You are thinking about 4 million low German community in the world. And 70,000, it's a lot. This is one way. And the other one through a radio program that we do, we do survey every three, four a year. How, how is your, uh, like for example, Spanish? Our Spanish program, we have four Spanish programs in more than 1,400 radio channels in Central South America. 1,400. And we survey them, we tell them, hey, what's your response and how? And they love it. They uh, do it. We don't pay a dime for broadcasting in Central South America. We don't pay. But they, because our, we have a high quality or our Spanish TV program, it's broadcast to uh, 300 TV channels, uh, cha uh, channels in Central South America. Yeah, th that's some measures that we have. Uh, th some of them very clear, like YouTube and the streaming services, but some of them, it's not clear. In the end of the day, I could very boldly say that we are a small organization, not a big one. But each year, millions of people around the world hear the gospel. That's, that's my conviction. Any question, any more comments? Thank you all. The Lord bless you.